How you doing, folks? You well? Excellent. Good stuff. Good. It's good to see people out on a on a Tuesday. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I I don't get out as much these days because I'm married now uh, with a little boy. Uh, I'm married to Joanne. She's my wife. I'm my best friend, which is a bit annoying because it means I have to slag her off to her face. <laughs> but he's a, he's a lovely little boy, my son. But I know that one day he's going to be a gobby teenager, isn't he? He's going to be there like, you can't tell me what to do, you old git. I'll be like, whatever, mate, I've shagged your mum. (laughs) Well, you can't hit them anymore, so it's psychological cruelty. That's what you've... (laughs) That's what it has to be now. It's the only way. But... uh... But he's, he's getting to an age now where he can see through my weak points. Like the tap was leaking a couple of weeks ago. And he's looking at me as if to say, what are you going to do, daddy? <laughs> it's like, Watch me, son. Watch me. Watch me phone my dad. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm no good at practical. People get really annoyed if you're not good at practical things. Like I broke di- down in my car. I broke down in my car a couple of years ago. I had to call out the RAC. And the bloke turned up, and it was a dead easy fix for him. It took him about five minutes, and he said, could you not fix it yourself? I was expecting him to say, yeah, I could, mate. I just fancied some company. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> but uh, I'm still scarred, actually, because uh, I couldn't uh, collapse the push chair in front of all the other parents at the soft play. It was so fucking humiliating. I was just there for ages going, fucking... Uh. The push chair was like, is that all you got, mate? Come on, it's a bit harder. This bloke had to wander over and went, yeah, mate, just, you just have to click these things. Click, click. And he just went, shh, like that. And the push chair went, as you wish, sir. <laughs> like, so how'd you do that, you fucking wizard? Yeah. As if going to the soft play isn't, like, scarring, mentally scarring enough. Have we got parents in who've got young kids? Yeah, have we been to the soft play centre? You can't avoid them, can you? The problem with it, it doesn't matter which one you go to, there's always a massive kid in the ball pool who's too old to be there, right? And I live in Salford as well. Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's an older kid or a young dad. (laughs) And you can't can't avoid the soft play either. You can't avoid it because every kid's party now is held in a soft play centre. I took my son to one of these kids' parties, right? Because it had been weird if I'd gone on my own, (laughs) right? And, uh, And there was this massive kid, this terrifying kid. I just said to my lad, I said, look, son... If, he, if that kid does anything to you, don't come running run to me. Have you seen the fucking size of him? <laughs> Honestly, he was massive, this kid. He had a pint on the go. <laughs> All the other kids stopped so they can have a drink. He stopped so he can vape, you know. <laughs> he had a bit of blood on his cheek. I don't know if he banged heads with another kid or, or cut himself shaving. I mean, can't tell. But uh, every, every party now is like, a, every kid's party is a soft play, uh, soft play party. There's only one party I took my son to that wasn't and it was a pirate themed party right? all the kids have pirate hats on pirate eye patch because pirates are the acceptable face of criminality aren't they that we expose our kids to like my son had a pirate t-shirt you know pirate ship all the toys and everything like that we don't we don't let our kids come into contact with any other type of crime do we like no no parents ever said to their little kid right let's get you upstairs and in the bath and then you can put on your ronnie cray pajamas What is it about the pirates that let them slip through the net, is what I want to know. I I wonder who did the PR for the pirates, because it must have been someone really good, right? I think whoever it was, I think it was the same person who did the PR for Prince Harry, right? Because everyone seems to sort of like Prince Harry now. Oh, he's getting a bit of shit recently, isn't he? But most people seem to sort of be on board with him. But I remember, right, in 2005, anyone remember what happened? Right, yeah, people are whispering, Nazi, right, okay. I hope that's why, because uh, for those of you who don't know, some of you are thinking, what the fuck's he bringing up the Nazis for? <laughs> Is this what the kind of bunker we're in? What the fuck? <laughs> it's a bit dark. No, let me reassure you, it's fine. Prince Harry, if you don't remember, in 2005, he got, he got in a lot of trouble because he went to a fancy dress party dressed as a Nazi. Everyone hated him for it, right? But I, c- I can sort of understand where he's coming from because uh, I did the same thing. I went to my mate's 30th, dressed as a Nazi. Apparently, that was inappropriate, mainly because the party wasn't fancy dress. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, I think it's one, of, it's one of those, isn't it? Like, I, I, do, I shouldn't moan too much about being a parent because uh, 
you know, I, I'm a parent in, in sort of today's day and age. It's, it's sort of quite easy, really, you know. I'm not, I wasn't a parent. I should be grateful I wasn't a parent back in Victorian times. You know, when it was really tough to be a fucking parent in those. I don't think parents had the same issues or worries. I think the conversations were different, you know. Two mums sort of meeting each other going, oh, Bernard would love uh, Alfred to come for tea one night. Um, do you think he'd like, oh, yeah, he'd love that. That's a great idea, yeah. What, what I was thinking was, I'll pick him up from the workhouse at six. <laughs> and I was just, I was just going to do gruel for the tea. Does he like gruel? Oh, no, he's gruel intolerant. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, well, I, well, the thing you do as parents, uh, especially if you've got young kids, is, 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 it's a bad thing. And, and we, me and my wife fell into this trap. Like What we used to do was we'd compare the development of our son with like the development of other kids that we were aware of. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't think they did that in Victorian times. You know, I don't think the parents were sort of stressed about that particularly. Oh, a bit worried about my, my lad. It takes him ages to sweep a street. Yeah. Next door's kid could do it in half the time, and he's got diphtheria. I wonder if it was possible to be old school back then in Victorian times. Like two old blokes in a tavern going, have you heard the latest thing now? Have you heard what they're saying now? They're not, they're not going to let kids go up chimneys anymore because of health and safety. Bloody ridi- ah, it's bloody ridiculous. There's a woman next door to me. She was telling me her son's got rickets. Bloody rickets. Have you had anything so stupid? Yeah, bloody lot of bollocks in it. I don't believe in rickets, me. In my day, just had shit bones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, some of the stuff new. I'll keep the rickets live. The rest of them there. I'll fuck it off. I'm just thinking out loud now. It's turned into a workshop. Uh, I move on. But yeah, your life does change. Yeah, it, those of you for young people, are you not, not, anyone not parents? Okay, yeah, yeah. Can hear the optimism. That's fine. <laughs> but your life, your life, let me tell you, your life does change when the kids start uh, rolling in, like when you start having kids. Because uh, 10 years ago, I was saving up to go traveling the world. Now I'm saving up for a fucking shed. Because <laughs> that's what happens, isn't it, old people? Yeah, you tie yourself down, don't you? As you go through life, you get married, you have kids, you have a mortgage. At that point, you need to buy a shed to keep your dreams in. <laughs> you know, I'm looking around. I'm, I'm looking around at sheds now. I'm thinking about sheds all the time. I don't know how it happened. I don't. I don't go to nightclubs anymore. I don't know when the trans. It's, I think it's a gradual transition. To be, it's not an instant thing, is it? It's not like you go clubbing for the last time. And the day after, you go looking around the garden centre, right? No one's ever bought a shed on a come down, have they? <laughs> Doesn't work like that. <laughs> Doesn't work like that. I've actually started looking at sheds on the internet. Yeah, I'm embarrassed. Fucking, I know. You're all judging me now, thinking you dick, right? Honestly, I'm embarrassed to admit that my wife walked in the room. I had to put Pornhub back on. At least then it made sense that I had an erection. <laughs> Whoa, look at that one. Put a snooker table in that one. How fucking big is that? Yeah. But uh, I, re- I do remember being single. I was on a date once. Uh, it's confusing being single. I was on a date with this girl, and she said, I like a guy to be masculine, but have a feminine side. What? What does that even mean? I like the sort of bloke who can put up a load of shelves and then sit down and talk about how the shelves make him feel. <laughs> you know the sort of bloke I'm talking about. He wears a tool belt but gets upset if his mate's wearing the same one. <laughs> it is a weird, it's a weird saying that, isn't it? The idea of like a man having a feminine side. Because like, you never hear it the other way around, do you? You never hear a bloke saying, oh, I, like, I like a girl to be feminine but have a masculine side. I want the sort of woman who likes, to t- who likes to talk after sex as long as it's about who's going to win the Champions League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's an Everton fan storming out there. Fuck off. <laughs> that's a s- I'm an Everton fan, so that's a self-heckle, by the way. That's a fucking... I know. I know. And let's not go down there. It'll be a fucking therapy session if we fucking go down that road. Yeah, it's a weird one. You, you don't, you don't, you just don't hear it that way around. Do you? you never hear a, a bloke saying, I like, I like the sort of woman who, you know what I mean? She, ha- she has loads of cushions on the bed, but she uses them to build a den. <laughs> you know the sort of woman I'm talking about? She has loads of candles around the bath, but she arranges them into the shape of a knob. 
To which I say the alarm bells should have been ringing the day she ordered the knob shaped bath. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, <laughs> try and do it in time with everyone else. It would, <laughs> would help me a lot, by the way. Fucking anonymous laugh in the darkness there. <clears throat> I shouldn't have a go at you for laughing. That is hopefully why you're here. That's, if you just move around a bit more, that'll be fine. <laughs> around that side, it's a bit quiet. Oh, now you're awake. Fucking, yeah. Yeah. I've been married uh, 11 years now. I've been married 11 years, uh, which is an achievement for me because uh, the boy's just pissing himself at the thought that someone would fuck me. Thanks a lot, mate. <laughs> Does happen on occasion. Uh, 11 years, say no more. But uh, like, I, it's an, it is an achievement for me because I'm not a romantic person. I'm not romantic at all. I, I don't believe in the one uh, you know, the idea that, you know, there's one person in the world that, that's sort of meant for you. Uh, I just don't believe it. I think you just sort of choose someone that you like. Hopefully they like you and you just fucking have a go, you know. Sorry, young people, to shatter your dreams. Uh, but, you know, my wife, you know, it does make me sound a bit of a dick. But uh, and my wife was a bit upset when I told her that. But it wasn't totally my fault. It was her idea that we wrote our own vows. I just don't believe in like the idea of that. It just made I just find it hilarious. Like because like me and my wife met in a in a pub like in Salford where we were both pissed, right? And it was a pub in Salford. I just don't I can't just buy the idea that Cupid was there with his bow and arrow, firing it into our. Although it was a pub in Salford, so there were weapons in the vicinity. <laughs> but you but you hear people. A lot of people believe in this idea of the one, don't they? Like oh, I always knew she was the one. From the start, I knew he was the one. And it turns out they met in the local pub. Like, wow. That one person in six billion just happened to live 50 yards away. <laughs> Amazing. Ah, oh, it was so magical. We were brought together by fate and happy hour. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. But uh, the, the, jo <laughs> the job I used to do, actually, uh, it should have put me off having kids. Because uh, I used to be a supply teacher. And... Uh, Thanks. Uh, and I see you again. Uh, I, used to, I used to choose this lad. I did, what I did, right, I did a lot of one-to-one -one tutoring for kids who'd been expelled from school. I used to choose this lad called Wayne. He was 15, been expelled. He wore a tag. Uh, but we got on all right, me and Wayne. And he said to me one day, he said, we could go out for a pint, you know. Like, yeah, of course we could, Wayne, because that's what my CRB form is for. <laughs> It's all right, we'll turn it into a field trip. It'll be all right. Uh, we'll bring a bit of maths into it as well, a bit of problem solving. If one pint of beer is two units and I buy you five pints, how long before I end up on a fucking register? <laughs> <clears throat> well, my favourite my favorite job that I did with the supply, my favourite one I did was uh, I, I, I worked in a primary school for a year uh, it was a primary school for kids who'd been expelled from primary school. Now, if you're nine years old, you've been expelled from school. That's worth putting on your CV, right? But uh, like the head teacher sat me down on the first day, and uh, she said, what, what you've got to remember, Sean, is that you know, these kids have been through very sort of traumatic experiences, uh, and that's why the behaviour is very challenging. And that is true, unfortunately, and it is a shame, but at the same time, that doesn't make their behaviour any easier to deal with, knowing that. Right, because like, I got chairs thrown at me on a regular basis. Now, let me tell you, once you've had a chair thrown at your head, right, as the pain starts to flare up, your first thought is not, oh, what a shame his mum spent his birthday money on weed. <laughs> I was on playground duty on the first day, right, and this kid came up to me right, on a tricycle and went, who the fuck are you? Yeah, basically, uh, I, I basically uh, I spent a year uh, getting sworn at by nine-year-old boys. That was my experience, and uh, and you expect a little bit of support, don't you, from your colleagues? Everyone kind of pulling together. I went into the staff room at break time. I said, "It's ten thirty in the morning, and Patrick has already called me a fat bastard <laughs> and a paedophile." <laughs> and one of the teachers went, "That's ridiculous. There's no way you're fat." Listen, ladies and gents, uh, that's my time, but you've been lovely. Enjoy the rest of your night. Good night. Cheers. <laughs>